Hi, I'm Kathleen Moore. Welcome to my studio. Today we are going to um, do a little sketch with a little watercolor of a fir tree in my neighborhood that just caught a little bit of snow. Thought it was so cute, couldn't resist, gotta, gotta sketch it. So let's get on over to the drawing board and um, First, I want to go over what uh, supplies that I'm using. Um, starts out with a sketchbook. And this sketchbook is a pretty good one. I like it pretty well. I like the size of it. This is a Grumbacher mixed media. Um, I like it for a couple of reasons. It's a smooth surface um, for drawing. If you're wanting to get in there and, and do some nice drawings, either in pen and ink or in pencil. So that's smooth, but it's a little bit heavier paper than your basic sketchbook, which sketchbooks have very thin paper. And if you want to add watercolor or any kind of um, damp medium, uh, you just, it, the paper will buckle if it's too thin, too lightweight. So this is a pretty good one. It's mixed media. Um, it's 90 pounds uh, paper, so it's, it's decent. Um, so that's the sketchbook that I'm going to use today. I've got my trusty mechanical pencil, which I love to sketch with. You, of course, can use any pencil that you like, or if you want to get in there with some pen and ink and go for it, why not? Um, but since we're using a little bit of watercolor in this sketch, make certain your ink is waterproof. The next thing that I have here that's indispensable is a kneaded eraser. So I've got that thing there. I've got uh, a water brush. Now I always keep a water brush in my sketch kit because I don't have to have a bucket of water to rinse out my brush. I just use this. It has the water right with it and I can refill it um, with a little water bottle, no problem. Um, if you're not familiar, familiar with these things, uh, the handle it has a little reservoir of water. You just unscrew it and fill it up with some water. And then the bristles are interesting. They're actually plastic bristles. And honestly, they're great for keeping in your sketch kit and adding just a little bit of watercolor for um, to you know, to color your sketches. Uh, the bristles are plastic, but they come to a nice little point. You can see how fine a, a point that comes to. Um, and when you want to rinse it out, you just squeeze the water into the bristles and wipe it on paper towel and your brush is clean. So that's really handy um, when you're out in the field. Uh, let's see, I've got a little squirt bottle in case I need to to um, need it a little extra water on something. And then I've got my travel palette, which is a Winsor & Newton little travel palette, which is kind of nice. So the first thing that I want to do before I even get started sketching, I'll put this over here so I don't make a mess of things. A ah, little chance of that. Okay, so the first thing is, and that's one of the reasons I like to have a little uh, squirt bottle is I want to dampen my watercolors so that they've kind of had a chance to get a little, little, you know, dissolved a little bit, ready for me to use to paint. Otherwise, what happens is you work so hard trying to get water through your little sketch, your little water brush, and then you're scrubbing around, whether it be with a water brush or a regular brush, if you haven't dampened your colors first, then you're really kind of scrubbing at the paint, trying to get the paint off of the little, um, uh, little square, and it just, you're scrubbing and you're wearing out your brush. So, wet your, uh, your paints first before you get started. All right, so that's done. Set that stuff aside, and let's get to sketching our cute little fir tree. So I think what I'm going to do is 
make a little rec rectangle that I want my sketch to live in. And then I'm going to first start off with just getting the, the basic shapes, the direction of my little branchlets there, kind of finding where everything goes. I'm not going to be perfect right now. I'm just trying to see lines in relationship to one another. Be very general and see the overall shapes and patterns. Okay, so I really like this sort of branch that comes up and it sort of has a sort of curve over the top and then comes down to this branch. And this one comes down way down far. And then there's a little branch here and one that actually kind of curves. I'm going to give it a little bit more curve. So it kind of does that and then curves back this direction. Okay, so you can see very, very simple. We want to start off always simple, right? Okay, now that I've got some basic directionality to work with, then what I'm going to do with this um, sketch is actually draw the shapes of the snow first. Then we'll come back and worry about the little fur needles. So coming around here, I will get the the width of the snow along the spine of the branch. I'm going to go down the, the main middle branches, middles of the branch first, and then come out with those little guys that come off to the sides. This one just ends in a little Y. It's so cute. Okay. And then there's this little guy that comes down and actually overlaps that one. And then this one that curves. I got that. Well, I'm so excited about that curve. I got a little little curvier than I really want, but you know what? If I don't tell, you don't tell either. Okay, so, and that's just going to go on off my page. All right, so now we're going to come back and add in the different little guides that are coming this way and that way. And yeah, maybe I kind of put this one out a little far to the side, but that's okay. Um, it's more of a, you know, a little bit of observation, a little bit of just having fun. Overlap there. We've got some little, little bits of branches coming off to the side here. Um, that's pretty much all just pine needles, fir needles. You know, it's really good to, to try to observe the different angles and the proportions of everything one to another. Um, we tend to get an idea in our head and make it what we think it ought to be. So we might, if we weren't careful, um, 
get crazy and just make everything very regular. And you notice on our reference photo here that these little um, branchlets coming off to off of the side are quite varied. They're not only different sizes, different lengths, but they're different widths and they're angled at different uh, angles. Some are curving, some are straighter. And the more we observe, the more um, lifelike our sketch will end up being. Rather than sort of a um, cartoony sort of thing. Okay, so we've got that, and there's just a hint of another little bit of snow right here. And then up here we've got the Y, and we've got a little branchlet that comes out here. And a cute one that comes out over here. And then we have this one that has a little bit coming here and here. And then this one, we've got a little branch this direction. Ooh, a nice curving one here. That's a little bit. Let's put this one kind of across from this. So this one really comes down at an angle and curves downwards a little bit. And then there's one over here. And we've got a little tiny one here and one here and just a little bit of one here. Okay, let's see. Did I get them all? Good. Pretty good. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, erase out any extra lines. Erasing, I'm, I really want to make sure that I've got the snow shape, which incorporates the middle down the spine, as well as the shape that comes out in on the little branchlets. But I don't want the, the line that crisscrosses there. I want to get rid of those lines. So I'm going to take a little bit of time to do that because once we get a little bit of water on our pencil line, it's going to be harder to erase them. And I don't want, because the snow is white, I don't want those lines to be cutting through my gorgeous snow sketch. So I want to make sure I get rid of those extra lines. Just take the time to do it. And this snow really comes down to a point. And not that it's going to make too much difference, but if you have extra little lines here and there, um, you know, get rid of them. Okay, let's go down and clean up this branch. Taking a little bit of time now is um, will save time later. You know, I think the most important thing to know about drawing and painting, sketching, is to think ahead, to plan. If you just rush in, um, you will you will find yourself in a little bit of a pickle now and then. <laughs> Not that it doesn't happen anyway, but at least you can um, resolve a few things before you get started painting. 
or inking for that matter, you know, you plan ahead of time and kind of see it in your mind's eye and walk through the steps it takes to create a painting or a drawing. So, um, the more experience you have sketching and painting, the more you know what your materials do and the process of creating um, a drawing or a painting. Okay, so I don't want to forget this guy over here. So, you know, practice sort of does make perfect. It helps you uh, plan out your next uh, drawing or painting if you know what steps you need to take. Okay, so I've got my snow sketched in. The other things that I want to pay attention to are a few branches, little branchlets that um, don't have any snow. I want to keep track of those guys. Kind of note them in. I can get those going around as I paint. And there's one kind of sticking out over here. That's kind of cute. Okay, just kind of want to remind myself of that. All right, so before I get started uh, with my paint, um, I've got my basic design uh, blocked in. I don't want too heavy of a line to show through my snow. So I'm going to use my kneaded eraser and lighten up all those lines so that I don't have, you know, those dark lines showing through. Um, a little bit of lines coming through a watercolor I think is kind of pretty. Kind of shows the hand of the artist. But I don't want it to be too strong in when I'm working with watercolor. Okay. So uh, we're going to go a little bit a little bit fast on this and then let it dry a little bit. So the first thing that I want to do is find my water brush. Where it, oh, there it is. And so I've dampened my paint. That's they should be nice and ready to be used now. And I'm going to grab a little bit of um, cool green. I've got this sort of phthalo green here. <clears throat> and that's a little bit of a intense green. And here's where I clean the brush. I can, I can squirt the brush, squirt, squeeze the water down the brush bristles and wipe it on the paper towel until it's cleaned up a bit and i'm going to just use a little bit of Payne's gray to make that even bluer and a little bit grayish and i'm going to use that to create a little bit of shadow on my my snow so um thinking about shadow on the snow and i want this shadow a lot of times shadows in snow um, are more of a blue gray but as i was looking at this reference photo there's so much green that's reflecting into the snow and coming through kind of the snow is almost a little bit transparent in certain areas and the green of the fir trees kind of working its way through that snow. So I'm going to use a little bit of this soft um, bluish gray green for the snow shadows. And they're not really that evident unless you think to yourself, hmm, that snow is a little bit round, so there's going to be some sort of a shadow. One thing about a winter day it's likely to be pretty cloudy, overcast, and not a lot of direct sunlight, or else, at least around here, 
that snow is probably going to be melting more likely than not. So shadows are going to be very soft and subtle and sometimes not that obvious until you look for them. So I'm thinking that most of the shadows, you know, are coming. Yeah, I'm just going to work on the shadows kind of towards the center here. Like I said, diffuse shadows um, on a little bit of snow on a cloudy winter day. So I'm going to come along here and give my snow just a little bit of shadow. Okay, now if you needed to um, soften that edge a little bit, then you simply clean, squirt out a little bit of water out through the water brush, clean off the bristles, and now you've got a damp, clean brush. And you can come back over and soften those edges if you feel that it's necessary. Keep your snow soft. The other way to do it would be to add a little bit of water first and then come back in with your shadow color. Okay, and I think that's how I do that. And I'm just going to quickly run over this whole area with a little bit of water. And Put in a little bit of shadow. And I'm kind of wiggling my brush a little bit so that um, so that the snow is irregular. It's it doesn't have a strong little stripe along that all hard edged and even. I'm kind of making that snow lumpy and uneven. Okay. I think I'll better add a little water to this guy. There we go. And as this dips down, it's got a little bit more shadow right down here. It's already looking snowy, isn't it? <laughs> All right. Uh, get my shadows on these little branchlets. You don't want to put water across everything and then come back um, all the way across because the water will dry up and um, you will lose that effect. Even here, just that little bit that I was talking, this paper soaked up the water and um, dried up a little bit. Okay, that's looking pretty. All right. There's one thing to watch out for as you squeeze this, if you're adding a little bit of water, if you squeeze a little too hard, you might get a little drip of water coming out here and that you don't want to um, let flop on your paper. So be careful. Um, when you're squeezing the water out, let's see if I can get it to do that on the camera. Oop, there it's going, dripping out the bristle. 
you don't want that to happen. So it's probably a better idea to squeeze if you're trying to um, make your bristles a little wetter, squeeze it out over your paper towel and then come into your draw into your sketch and dampen the sketch that way so you don't have an accident. And as I go along, I'm just coming back and making sure that this top edge of the shadow is a little soft and wiggle woggly to get that snowy effect. Don't want to forget that old guy. It looks chilly, doesn't it? Okay. Dampen that bristle. And some water along all these little guys. You, if the paint that you grabbed on your palette is a little bit thicker and dark, just dab your, just wipe off your brush, come back before it's wet, or before it's dry, and lift off some of that extra pigment. I love how watercolor flows into the water that you've placed on the drawing already. It's so pretty. Okay, so you probably noticed that as the watercolor dries, it gets a little bit lighter in value. So that's that's fine. We like that. We wanted our snow to be white, feel white, right? Um, so the next thing that I want to do is put in just a little bit of warmer color on some of these stems that one that we can see a little bit of the, the actual stem itself um, and then some of these that have no snow on them at all. Just that little tiny bit of warmth kind of makes a difference. And I don't want it, oops, it's scooting all over the place. I don't want that warm brownish stem to be too orangey. You know, if, if you just put, I've got burnt sienna here. If you just put, put burnt sienna down, it might be a little uh, jarring. So I'm just going to tone that down with a little bit of Payne's Gray. And I can... I can go back and forth between the blue of the Payne's Gray and the orange of the Burnt Sienna until I get a color that's, oh, it's warm, but it's not glaringly orange, like it's just straight up Burnt Sienna. So here's the difference between those two colors. This is a little bit uh, more neutralized. It's a little bit darker right now on the paper towel, but you can see between the 
between the burnt sienna and this color that I mixed. This one is a little softer, a little more gentle. So I don't want it to be too intense. Um, it is a little bit of a dark little thing there. I'm just going to make a gentle little mark here where that stem comes down here. There's another one here. Oh, there's another one. Where is that? It's coming out from in here someplace. And there's this guy right here. Okay. That should do it. Alrighty. So I'm going to grab a new paper towel. Clean out my brush a little bit. Now comes the fun part. Let's get some nice green going on. I've got this leaf green, which obviously is way too crazy of a color. My colors are a little bit drying out, so I'm going to give them another spritz. All right, so I've got leaf green, which is insanely too vibrant, you know, like, oh my goodness. And then I've got this uh, phthalo green stuff that's a little bit bluer, and that makes it a little, little closer to what we've got going on there. But that's still just way too intense, so I'm going to clean off my brush. And, you know, if you've got a green that's too... Um, jarring like this is then what you do or any color any color that you need to kind of tone down a little bit you should reach across the color wheel to its complement so if you've got a green and you need to neutralize it you go on the other side of the color wheel to its complement so here we can see that green's complement is red, all right? So I'm going to reach across my color wheel on my palette and grab up a little bit of red to neutralize, soften, tone down um, that wild and crazy green. So picking up a little bit of this cad red and you can see it immediately neutralizes that wild and crazy green. Now we've got something that's a little bit more in keeping with our fir tree. Okay, so now looking into um, into our reference photo, we can we can see that we've got little fir needles coming out and they're different shades. We've got some that are quite light and some that are really dark like that are going on up in this area they're quite dark but the ones out here are quite light they're catching more light they're out in the sunshine a little bit more so i'm going to take some of this nice mixture and i'm going to put some over here and add just a little bit more yellow in it it's still very neutralized but it's got just a little bit more yellow. That's for my lighter value, sunnier little needles that are out over here. Okay. So one thing that um, you have to be careful of is that we might think of a branch for you know making these little fur needles in sort of a uh, pattern right but when we really look at what's going on we recognize that oh it's not just a pattern that we've got a lot of overlap with these little fur needles so let's take a look first at one of these that doesn't have snow and see if we can kind of figure out what's going on in fact 
for just a minute, let me zoom this up and let you take a close look at the fur needles and how that they come out from the stem all the way around. So like a bottle brush, think of a bottle brush. All those little bristles are coming out all around in every direction. That's what's going on here to, to uh, a great extent. So we've got to remind ourselves, and as you look at that, you can see that these little needles, not only are they going around the stem, out from the stem in all directions, but they're overlapping one another because they're not just sticking straight out, they're kind of curving forward. So let's zoom that back over here. And working from this little stem here, let's make some little pine needles. They're fur needles. Okay. So I'm going to start right here at the end. There's this sort of little bud thing, right? And from the bud thing, the, the little fur needles come out all the way around. Now I'm working very light right now. Okay, you always start with the light and then go darker later. So starting with the light, we can capture that sensation of some sun hitting our little tree. And then I'm going to I'm going to think about this for a second. You know, as the pine as the fir needles go along the stem, we definitely get a sensation that they have um, that they're all approximately the same length and so that gives that width to the whole little stem and we can actually kind of create almost a little um, beginning of our little fur branch here by just putting some very regular marks out to the side just to sort of establish the width of that little branch. And then we can remember that these needles are not just going out to the sides, but they're also coming up towards us and over around and down to the bottom as well. So now I can kind of think about a row of needles at a different angle. And an even greater angle. And you can see that that feels more natural than if we just made them out to the side. This feels like they're growing in every direction. So that's good to get started with. That gives us a feeling for how to accomplish the same thing going on with our um, the needles that are sticking out from under the snow. Okay, so Again, starting with that yellower green, lighter value, I'm going to work on some of these that are right here in the um, at the front of the tree. And here's the little bud. Actually, I think I'm going to go back real quick and put just a little bit of this stem color right along here because we kind of see it. And then go back into my green and notice that from the stem, again, we've got these little needles coming out. They get a little bit shorter as they come to the end of the stem. 
I'm going to curve forward just a little bit. And I'll go ahead and just sort of make some even, almost even, needles coming out. And then on this side, from this stem, but wait, the snow is in the way, so they're not going to be as long. They won't look as long, because if I connected them up to the stem, they would be the same length, but that snow is in the way, and we're just painting them out from under the snow. So just start out with some shorter marks and see what's going on. And then the same way, come back again with little needles that are at a different angle because they're coming up and towards us more. And that gives us the sensation of the fullness of all those little guys. Now, the fun thing is, remember how we talked about these needles are coming out from the stem in every direction looking into the snow we can see that we have some of those little needles poking up out of that snow so we can um, check and see what direction they're mostly going in and get them coming right out of the snow. I'm going to go with a little bit darker color we don't want to be super regular with these in placement. If you get them all the same space apart, they look kind of a little funky. And we don't want them to be all um, the same exact angle. Okay. Maybe some of them kind of come this way too. All right. So there we've got... A little bit of snow with the with the branch, um, the needles coming out from behind, and um, I'm going to put some darker needles coming out so that my snow shows up a little bit more on top of the dark color of the needles. Okay, so that's our first little branchlet, okay? So then we can just continue on. Um, and keep working along all of our little branches. So starting down here, the little, the little bud. I'm just getting the length and directionality of this first row of needles. And then I'm going to come back in and go at a different direction and let them overlap. Put a few coming out of the snow because that's so cool. Okay, and then um, really just sort of give some of these a little extra oomph with dark so that our snow kind of stands out a little bit more. Okay, I'm just going to go crazy and do um, lots of needles
Okay, so there's no way. There's no branch with needles sticking out every which way. And using the dark green to kind of enhance a little bit the, the darkness. The, the dark against the light of the snow makes the snow shine brighter. So just using that to my own advantage. And get this guy going. mix up a little bit more of this color a little bit thicker so I use that sap green and a little bit of um, uh, Payne's gray and I'm making a mess of my red but the red neutralizes it down adding a little bit of water so that it's not too dark and thick and but it is a little bit darker and I can come in in these little corners especially and paint a few more little needles As I need to to get them get that darkness to show off my snow see how that stripey business looks crazy right but coming back over and overlapping in different directions and putting a few little needles coming out of the snow makes the difference Back in here where there's a lot going on, a lot of overlap with different branches will get quite dark and kind of thick and, you know, really almost solid, right? So you can definitely get in there and add a, more darks in there with all of those overlapping little needles. And, of course, as you go along, and the paint dries and it becomes a little bit lighter you can always come back in and add more darks to get that um, the pizzazz going on okay so let's keep going
in some of these areas that are are a little bit in the background you can kind of mass your your color your greens together more or less with a few details here and there Let's see, I think I'll just bring dark right up here. I got to kind of keep it a little bit loose. Suggest more snow back there, but I'm not, you know, um, defining it. Okay. It's nice at the ends to make that little um, rounded um, collection of needles. They're a little bit shorter and they're all coming around like kind of a, like a, a cup, you know, kind of like this out from around the, the little bud. And so it's kind of fun to remember to create that little round and on the fur branches. You can definitely get into kind of a cruise control when you're doing something like this that's you know, very repetitive. It's really good to stop every now and then and kind of lean back and look and see what weird things that you might have been doing. Like right here, as I leaned back, I see this strange crisscross pattern that I set up. And it's like, oh, that looks ridiculous. So I need to get back in there and break that strange pattern that I set up. And some of that can be dealt with by um, massing some of the color, by changing some directions of some of the, the needles. Okay, that looks quite a bit better. <laughs> this looks like, I don't know what, moss hanging down or something. So I need to kind of come back and adjust some of the directionality of some of the marks. Not let myself get into that strange plaid design that I put in before. And not forget this side of the branch. And in fact, there is so much going on in this area right here. There's a lot of overlap, and it just comes into pretty much solid green. And 
so I'll just bring it all together with a nice dark green. But not totally solid, leaving a little bit of texture in there to create that sense that, you know, these these little guys are going every which way. Now, as we're looking at this little area right here, well, this looks really cool. Like there's a lot of branch little needles going down below the branches, but not a lot of sensation of the, branch, the needles coming up. So I have to be careful to get some of these little needles coming up out of the snow to get that feeling that, oh, yeah, needles are coming all the way around out of the snow all along the stem. That's what makes the difference. All right, onward. Okay, so we're doing pretty good, right? Looks pretty good. It feels like a little snowy fir tree. I like it. It's so much fun. Okay. And let's keep going. Different directions. Out to the sides, crossing in different directions, and then sticking up out of the snow. Now, in foreshortening, as as my fingers come, okay, so if the fingers are sticking out straight to the side, they look long, right? But if I lift this finger up towards me, look at how short that appears, right? It's that long, but as it comes towards me, it appears shorter, right? That's called foreshortening. Cool thing. It's a cool thing in like, you know, figure drawing, but it's also a really cool thing with trees. Like that. When it comes directly towards me, it's basically just a dot, right? So we can apply that for shortening to all of our little needles coming out around the stem of our tree, of our branches. So making some of these short and spiky in different directions gives a sense that they're coming out in every direction. Same thing goes with the needles that are going down, right? So if you have your hand, your fingers are sticking out to straight to the side, well, the same thing happens when they are pointing away from us. You see how this finger now gets shorter as it points away from us. It appears to be shorter, right? Likewise, if it goes all the way down, we don't see it at all, but if it only sticks out just a little bit, um, it's very short, right? So 
Same thing goes with all of these little needles. If they are going down away from us, then they're short. If they're sticking straight out, they're long. And if they're sticking up towards us, they're short again. In fact, they might just be a little dot if they're angled directly towards us. Same thing goes with branches themselves. They have, they come out towards us. They're not just flat in one plane. So we have to learn how to make branches come out towards us. It's all about foreshortening, but that's for another video. Um, painting tree branches. dots, little tiny dashes. Okay, better work on this one a little bit. It needs a little bit more darks. It needs some foreshortening of some of these little guys sticking out. Hey, we're getting there. Coming along pretty well. Okay. Sometimes I forget to talk. I'm just having so much fun painting that I forget to narrate what I'm up to. <laughs> so again, you know, moving all along here, making some of these um, sticking up so that they're basically straight at us, doing a little foreshortening with the needles and little cute polka dots there does a good job of that. Here's my little, another little branch that has no snow on it. So again, starting with the bud at the end of the little stem, remembering that these needles are coming in sort of a cup shape in every direction. And out from there, needles not only going out to the side like that, but some are going down and they're shorter and they're overlapping what's there and some are coming up and again it's basically the same thing they're overlapping and then we have a nice little branch that doesn't seem like it's sort of flat and cartoony. Let's see. Oh, I've got to get these guys going on here. Oh, 
almost done. Almost. I think this needs a little more going on underneath more branches down here. Yeah. And maybe a little bit more depth of needles all along here. And, you know, one of the, the most important things you can do while you're working, whether it just be sketching or um, painting, uh, is to really lean back, step away, step back from your drawing or your painting. Occasionally to get another view of it, kind of a fresh eye view of what you're doing, a different perspective. You know, when we're working on something for a long time, we kind of become blind to it. We get more into the action of painting or drawing than and kind of lose sight of the wholeness. So by leaning back, getting a little bit farther away from our work, you get the whole picture. You can see it more easily. Um, and you can kind of say, oh, Oh, you know what's working what's not what does my eye uh, go to is it a good thing or is it a bad thing what can I do to make this look a little bit more what I want it to look like um, what seems forgotten what seems uh, like you know just needs a little touch-up and so one of the things that um, I'm seeing here is um, right up here this corner is just sort of blank. Now I love this direction of these branches going right up to that kind of curve right up to here. So uh, I want to really just sort of fill this whole area in with texture, nice dark green texture. So I'm using my dark green and I'm kind of getting branch movement going on in here. And I'll mass in the darks, not totally solid, because I don't want it to look like a dark hole, <laughs> but you know, a little bit more, um, more going on right in there. In fact, I might go just a little bit darker right up here. And the other thing that you can do is squint and uh, kind of get sort of a softer view of what you're doing. And when you squint, sometimes things drop out and you can't see them at all. And you think, oh, I need to touch that up. And one of the things that kind of disappears, now it does disappear a little bit in my reference photo, but I don't want it to disappear that much on my painting. So it is right here. So when I squint at that, this area is so pale and nondescript that it's kind of just disappearing. So I want to beef that up just a little bit. A little bit dark in here, but I'm using a little bit more, um, a little bit thicker version of that green, yellowy green sunshiny color adding that in and maybe I'll do a little bit more right in here don't want it to drop off and not see it okay don't want to fiddle foodle around with it too much. Okay, I think that's it. I think I'll call it. So there is my little drawing, my little watercolor sketch of a snowy fir tree. And uh, they're just so delightful when you go for a walk and you see that snow hanging out on the 
on the little branches of the trees is so pretty so i hope that gives you some inspiration to get out there and um if you're not sketching out in the freezing cold <laughs> winter weather at least take some um snapshots and bring them back to the studio and have fun sketching fir trees in the winter all right so thank you so much for watching and uh you know if you're interested in other classes and workshops and resources go down to my website take a look around there and uh you know if this if you like this video give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe maybe you'll want to see some more all right thanks a bunch bye guys